This year marks 80 years since the death of Benjamin, the last living thylacine. Though it is one of the most recent extinctions of an Australian mammal, the thylacine is far from alone in its demise. Just 50,000 years ago, Australia abounded with large mammals, reptiles and birds. This included multiple diprotodontids, some getting up to 2 tonnes, Jenny Ornis, a 300kg flightless bird, Megalania, a 7 metre goanna related to the much smaller Komodo dragon, Thylaca leo, the largest ever marsupial carnivore, and many, many more. And this included the thylacine. Fossils, subfossils, and Aboriginal art have shown that the thylacine used to cover the entire continent, from New Guinea in the north to Tasmania in the south. But, as has happened throughout much of the world, these large animals began to disappear with the arrival of people. 90% of the animals that were over 60 kilograms disappeared. But two smaller carnivores managed to survive this initial destruction. The thylacine and Tasmanian devil both lived with people on the mainland for tens of thousands of years. Then, around 3,500 years ago, they both disappeared. The cause of this extinction is not fully understood, but it coincided with the introduction of the dingo and a shift in Aboriginal culture. So there are two major theories. The first is the most simple. Dingoes killed the two large carnivorous marsupials until their extinction. Similarly, the dingo may have been a superior competitor. They forever changed the food web and the marsupial carnivore lost their main prey. The other theory again points blame at people. A series of technological breakthroughs around 3,500 years ago coincided with a larger population. And as we have seen many times in the 21st century, more people tends to lead to fewer predators. But whatever the reason, their resilience was finally overcome and both species disappeared from the mainland. And then, a few thousand years later, the British invaded. Whereas the first wave of extinction affected the large animals, the second wave affected medium-sized mammals. The British introduced a bunch of foreign animals to Australia and two of them are incredibly effective predators the domestic cat and the red fox. In much of the continent, particularly the arid centre, Australia lost most or all ground mammals between 35 grams and 5.5 kilograms. The main exception, for obvious reasons, is the echidna, now one of the most common and widespread mammals in Australia. But throughout all this, Tasmania remained relatively safe for Australia's native mammals. Although they lost most of the megafauna during the first wave of extinction, the thylacine and Tassie devil avoided the effects of the dingo, or technology, and medium-sized mammals avoided the fox. So during the 19th century, Tasmania was home to the thylacine. But, with Europeans came guns and a dislike for native animals. So for 20 years, the Tasmanian government rewarded the hunt of the thylacine with a one-pound reward. But what happened after this large-scale cull? The thylacine was still common in some areas, and although the bounty was removed, hunting still happened, particularly when a thylacine was found on or near a farm. But Tasmania is full of non-farmy areas, with some of the largest tracts of forests in Australia. What could have happened to finally wipe them out? One of the leading theories concerns what's called the alley effect. Some species rely on a minimum population density to survive. The thylacine, like most large predators, was probably a solitary animal. And while solitude means you don't need to share food, it also makes it harder to find a mate. When the population is large, males and females will find it easier to find one another during the mating season. But when populations are small, this becomes hard. And once breeding gets down to a certain level, the population will slowly disappear. By the end of the bounty, the thylacine was not extinct and was still regularly seen for over a decade. But it had been hit hard. The remaining population was significantly smaller. And anything from disease, to the now introduced dog, to the alley effect, could have dealt the final blow. Now the causes of all these extinctions are still contested. But trying to understand what this final blow was may help us to save species into the future. 80 years after the thylacine disappeared, the Tassie devil is facing an extinction crisis of its own because of a single disease. A disease that has wiped out more than 80% of them in just one decade. What final blow is awaiting Australia's now largest marsupial carnivore?